then uh, I haven't seen the presentation yet, so I'm very curious, and the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, it, actually, with this little audience, I would be more comfortable on the floor, but my computer is up there and I don't have remote. I will have to go there. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, very briefly, uh, and I think the only thing that is uh, important in the, at the first slide is uh, that I claim to be uh, self-proclaimed uh, Mr. Know-it-all. Because uh, how can you be a specialist if you don't have a formal degree, if you have never worked in a printing company, if you don't know anything about inkjet, if you basically don't know anything but you just try to make the puzzle fit together. And that is what I have done with uh, English for the past eight years, uh, basically saying to myself and my colleagues and to the industry, if you can't, if you don't know things yourself, just ask somebody who knows more, right? So that is, uh, that is a kind of... Uh, introduction to myself is a little bit about who I, who I am and uh, what I like. I think the most important thing is, of course, that I have a passion for cooking, which shows, right? So I apologize for that, but uh, let's go on. Before I'm actually going to talk about the topic that uh, Peter asked me to talk about, I would like to take you a little bit down memory lane. Um, and uh, you, can, you can ask yourself, uh, why is this important? Um, I don't know if you know it, but Inkjet was uh, actually invented already in the 50s. And there's been a technology that has been uh, in the market for a long time with different applications, probably not so much in, in, in the graphics arts industry, but in, in a lot of other industries. And uh, if we compare to, to the quality in, in the 50s, it's probably you know, something that we'd be very proud of today, but it's nevertheless a fact. The problem is that when we're going to talk about whether Inkjet is the new disruptor in, within digital print, is that sometimes we need to have a perspective on things. And I, you probably know these, uh, both the people that are the musicians, and I also search for, for the ideals of women, and because that is, they are much more into fashion than most men are, so you can just see how things are changing. And then I found the Atari 2600. When I look at it, it looks like a really, really, really old thing, but it was actually produced in the 90s. So, let's go down memory lane because I would like to ask you or talk to you a little bit about something that I feel really important, way more important than talking about Inkjet, because dispersion violence, that is the ultimate disruption of offset print. Isn't that uh, Those of you who have worked with uh, offset printing may remember that in the 90s, uh, all the offset manufacturers rolled out dispersion varnish uh, being a part of the, the CMYK, processes because first it looked better, secondly it dried faster, third they thought it could make more value to uh, to make more money on this. And probably that didn't happen because when everybody got uh, the, the dispersion varnish units on the offset machines, uh, it became something that was almost given away for free, so they didn't really make money on it, they just invested more money. And uh, they thought it could be something that looked great, so that could be an added value to the sales. Most printing companies actually gave this person varnish away because they could then dry faster and process the sheets faster. Uh, and I think that this, people that work in the offset industry know that this is... Of course, there was also sometimes people that would, would pay more for it, but that was actually the promise that was kind of given by the industry to the printing companies investing in dispersion varnish. One thing that is quite interesting to think about when you go back again to the 90s, there was no internet. Uh, actually, it was only in 2080 that 30% of the global population had internet access. And uh, I don't think that anybody today questions how big and an important thing the internet has been to our industry. Not just because of online printers, but because of the supply chain. I always give this example. When I started in the printing industry uh, in around 2000, I, I lived in a, in a small city, a relatively small city with about 40,000 people living there. We were three printing companies and we hated each other. Uh, those on the other side of the street, we didn't even talk to them if we met them in the industry. Because, and we would never ever talk to them if we had like anything that could be competitive. 
What happened very shortly after was that now we started competing with the next to the city I lived in. So now they started to merge and become a little bit bigger because they wanted to have a bigger machine, they wanted to have the dispersion varnish, and in order to justify that investment, they merged into bigger uh, company space. Uh, th at this time, before the internet, it was also a time where uh, the mass communication for most companies were based on North Print because uh, radio television was maybe not really within reach of most printing companies and most companies in general. So, so this was one of the main communication channels in the industry. I just think it's kind of uh, mind-blowing that this is only like between 20 and 30 years ago that this was the reality. So, when we talk about inkjet and we talk about all the things that are so interesting in the industry right now, how does the future actually look? Uh, there was a Danish uh, poet who said it's very, very difficult to predict, especially about the future. And I think it's a great saying because uh, basically, uh, how should we, how should we make our decisions of where we are going uh, in uh, when we invest in new technology? You can always say that, that uh, for example, in this example here, I say that uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the word megatrends, but megatrends is generic trends that are across all industries, many industries. And some of the ones I've, that we are pretty sure will take place in all businesses in the future, for example, is sustainability. It's already here, it is something that is becoming more and more important, and it's something that we will have. It's also the digital transformation is also something that is happening right now. When we talk about IoT, we talk about the robots, we talk about uh, 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 cobots, and we talk about all the things that would make our. We talk about light out, light out production. We talk about all the things that basically leads to a more smart factory uh, that basically can more or less operate without floor. One of the things that I also like about some of the mega trends is the transparency, uh, closer to the source, faster and better. Uh, I heard yesterday uh, we were talking uh, with some people talking about how how the printing industry look. We have in Europe uh, quite a high number of uh, online printers, and uh, online printers they have been able to centralize the product production. Gang print to make things cheaper, make it more available. But now there seems to be a tendency with digital that instead of using it centralized spend a lot of energy setting back and forth all the papers that are printed to uh, destinations far away. You start looking at business model where you can produce close to the source. It's faster, it's more envi environmentally friendly, and it basically gives a lot of more uh, capabilities. To, uh, so a lot of the, the really big printers are looking into this. So this is one way of doing the issue is that we want to invest in something that is the reason why I want to take you on the memory of It's basically that we invest in new technology. It's not something that you just pay now and that it's your finished with. There is and there will always be like a new page and repayments. There's always a time span where you have to invest in something to make it. Mega trends is now they can change media, they can change graph dramatically, and they can be influenced by all the things that can control. Like a small computer, a small wall, or you know, some things that we can't control will change how people consume, how people react, and how people react towards the changes in the market. So if you're a printing company, and you don't want to just think about right now, and we all work, a lot of people think that disruption is, is a, a word that is really important to think of. I just collected a few slides about disruption. I just, maybe you know them. Do you know what this uh, photo is about? It's a, it's a Tesla that is in a, in a tunnel. Uh, it's one of Elon Musk's projects called The Boring Company. He figured out that uh, all tunnels in the world are drilled with different sizes of, uh, of uh, the, the tunnels. So he thought that, okay, if I can make all of the tunnels the same size, I can mass produce boring machines and basically make it cheaper to make the tunnels. So this is a tunnel that goes from, I think it's from the airport in Las Vegas to downtown Las Vegas. You go, take an elevator down, you pay a small fee, you get into a, a self-driving Tesla that drives you to the city. No conjunctions in the streets, just easy and convenient, right? So this is one example. Do you know this one? That's a Starlink, right? 
uh, also again, uh, Elon Musk said that, okay, if I produce 40,000 of the same satellites, industrial scale production, and put them in a grid around the earth, we can give uh, internet access very fast to every corner of the world. Uh, and would it be possible if you didn't have uh, the Falcon 9s that can actually blow them 